I'm Richard Gehring, and we're here at the eve of the Design Automation Conference in San Diego, California, talking to Gary Smith just after his uh, presentation Sunday evening. And uh, Gary, there was a lot of talk in, in the presentations here about software, about parallel programming, about multi-core. Yeah. Why are these topics so important to bring up at the Design Automation Conference? When I check with my users, uh, which I do prior to any DAC, uh, I, I check to see what's the important topics. And that's how I come up with what to see at DAC list. Uh, it, it was a very unusual year. Number one was there were five important topics, uh, but the real un uh, unusual part of it was the top three were software, software, and software. <laughs> the, the, the main concern was um, homogeneous software. Uh, as you know, we're at four, uh, four microprocessors today uh, as far as the uh, AMD and Intel are concerned. Uh, except for embarrassingly parallel programs, uh, Amdahl's law pretty much says you're not going any further than four. So we've got a fairly important segment of our industry wondering what's next and how are we going to solve this. We certainly can't solve it with sequential languages such as C. Uh, there's something that has to be done. The second one they were talking about that there was a big problem, different types of vendors, were, was the, uh, the heterogeneous processing problem. What we have found is that uh, in uh, heterogeneous computing, those types of processes don't t play well together. We've seen a bunch of failures of, uh, of these larger SOCs with mobile platforms on them, where the silicon's fine, but we can't program them, which means, of course, the program's dead. So they're solving it today by using um, what's called padded cell design, just keeping every application completely separate. That's going to run out of steam pretty soon because it's not a very optimal design. In fact, it's a fairly ugly way of designing, and you're going to run into power problems before long. So that's the next one they want. And then the last one, of course, is hardware software co-design or co uh, partitioning, the initial partitioning. Now, it, we have a big power problem today, which is the fifth thing on the list, and 80% of your power problem should be solved at the partitioning stage. And today we have no tools to take a look at that partitioning to see how to actually architect the SOC to get the least power. Now, Gary, you're, you're an analyst, and yep. your, your customers are semiconductor vendors, is that right? Uh, a lot of and, them and, are, yep. And you're saying that the semiconductor vendors are looking to the EDA vendors to solve both hardware and software yes. problems. Yes, But are the EDA vendors solving those software problems today? Uh, no. Okay. There's uh, the only one, and that one of the sad parts of, of what's going on at DAC today is that the only one on that list is Empress mm -hmm. that is addressing the problem. A stealth mode startup. Yeah. Okay. So this is, is something that we're seeing, we're starting to see startups fool with as far as the, uh, the, you know, the mature EDA companies, they're really fairly clueless about, with exception of Mentor, mm -hmm. about uh, embedded uh, and processing. Do you think they will step up to the plate and start addressing this problem? Uh, the ones that are going to survive will have to. Do you think they'll start addressing the full spectrum of the software problem, including uh, our tosses, including middleware, as well as certainly, tools. The, certainly the middleware is going to come up. Uh, our tosses probably will be dragged in because they're a traditional part of the embedded uh, environment. Turn but it's, the tools are really what the, uh, the, the uh, users want. Okay. Turning to this year's DAC, Gary, do yep. you see any kind of overwhelming theme or message coming up? I, I think I think what we're seeing today at this DAG is a group of new startups that are really starting to use parallel processing, develop tools for the 65-45 nanometer. Now, the designs are over 100 million gates. That's pretty exciting. We're starting to see uh, startups that are playing with uh, the, the true intelligent test bench rather than just bundling a bunch of tools together. So, so some, of these, some of these breakthrough ideas that we've been discussing for a while now, we're starting to see startups 
address them. So uh, that's what makes this to be a very exciting DAC for me. Okay, and you've got this What You See in DAC 2007 yep. list. Yep. Any any startups on here that have particularly caught your eye? Well, of course, I already mentioned Empress. The ones that are doing the intelligent test bench, like Breaker, uh, da, 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 da. Axiom, uh, Uh, Citrus and uh, Newsom uh, are looking very good. Okay. One thing I haven't seen a lot of is uh, DFM startups, yes. uh, DFM announcements. So why is that? Uh, because funding got caught off by the VC October a year ago. Okay. So there's really <laughs> been no funding that's been out there. I mean, basically they saw somewhere around 26 new startups going after a market that was initially touted as a, well actually one company said it was a six billion dollar market, a little hard to believe when EDA is only four billion, but certainly it was touted as a, as a billion dollar opportunity. Mm -hmm. It isn't a billion dollar opportunity. Uh, the VCs finally figured that out. They were overexposed in the market and they really stopped. Uh, there they are, they are continuing funding of the ones that are getting traction, but you know if you've got a new DFM idea, probability to get it funded is, uh, is pretty low. Yeah. One, one last thing, why aren't there more ESL startups? Uh, there are a lot of them. There, there are, are actually quite a few. The I, What we're trying to do is what Date's been able to do is get them to come to DAC. Ah, okay. Because Date now has, as of this year, is really recognized as, as covering the full spectrum of systems design, hardware and software. That's where DAC has to be in the relatively near future. And today we're still looked at as primarily a hardware show. All right. Well, very good. And thank you for watching EE Times TV. Thanks.